Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to change the key bindings and the key mappings in your game. So if you have space to jump, you can change this to a different key, or if you have W for forward, you can change this to a different key. So I'll just be showing you how to do this now. So again, I will also be showing you how to do this. So we can obviously move around like this. I can hit a space to jump like that. And then I've set this up so if I press M, we get this menu here. If I press this, so the jump button here, I can then press a different button, so if I press P, and then if I just press M again to close this menu, and now if I press space, nothing happens, but if I press P, it will then jump as well. And now we will make this menu look a lot nicer as well, but this is just for the testing, and also this saves automatically as well, so I go back in and press P, it jumps, if I press space, it doesn't, so it automatically saves this action binding as well, as it is actually completely changing the binding. So I'll show you how to do that now. So our first step to do is to create this widget. So to do that, what we're going to do is right click, go to user interface, get a widget blueprint. And I'm just going to call this bindings underscore widget. But obviously you can put this in your main menu, in your options menu, something like that. And I'd recommend actually linking this to a main menu screen instead of just pressing a button like I'm doing here. But obviously you can do it whichever way you like. So once you've made that, let's open it up straight away. And what we're going to do up in the top left, we're going to search for an input key selector like that. And we can just drag and drop that on here like so. As you can see, it already has the text and everything on here. I'll just make this a little bigger like that. And then I'll also just anchor this over to the left here as well. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get another one. But actually, I'll rename this first. And I'll rename this one to jump bind button like that. And then down under here, under no key specified text, I'll change it from empty to jump. So this is essentially just the text that you want it to display so that obviously the player knows what button they are changing. So you can select that and you can change all these different settings as well. This is just like a normal button and text that you would have. This allow modifier keys is obviously if you want to be able to allow the player to change it on a keyboard event. And this allow gamepad keys is if you want them to change it on a gamepad keyboard event or a gamepad key, sorry. So if you want it to be a keyboard for PC or if you want it to be a controller for a console. But obviously I just want it to be a keyboard event like so. So I think that's going to be good for me. And then like I say, I will get another button here, put this just underneath it, and I'm going to call this one walk forward. So I'll show you how to do this with an action mapping and an axis mapping as well. So walk forward bind button. And then this time I'll just call this walk forward like so. Make this button a little bigger like that. And actually I'll increase the size of both of them to the same. So this will just look something along these lines for the moment. I'll actually put this in the middle but again this is just a temporary testing thing you can obviously make this look a lot nicer and a lot better and put it in a main menu options anything like that but to actually get into the functionality of this we'll select our jump button here we'll go down on the bottom right and we'll get an event for on key selected so this is when the player clicks on the key to select it they can then change the binding so i'm also just going to delete these here and then what we're going to do from this is we're going to come out of the selected key and we're going to break input cord like so, and we'll just open this up to get some more here. So now we get the key, the shift, control, alt, and command, meaning that essentially, if the player is holding shift and a key, it would use both of these, so it just works a lot better. And now with the key, what we're gonna do is make input action key mapping, as this is the one I want for the jump. So I want this to be an action key mapping, non axis key mapping. So I'll do that there, and again, open that up like so, and plug all these appropriate booleans in here, so command and command, shift and shift, all of those. And the action name, we want to change this for the actual action name that we have. So you need to make sure you spell this completely the same. So for me, I have jump, and if you don't know quite what I'm on about, I'll show you here. So in the project settings where you actually have your input bindings, we see that the action mapping, I have jump there. So I've got jump, and I've named it the exact same here. And so then out of the input action key mapping here, so this is where we can actually select the key, and it's going to make the key mapping there, we want to actually add this mapping. So we'll come out of the input action key mapping and we will add action mapping. Make sure you untick context sensitive like that and add action mapping there like so with the key mapping going in there like that. And we want to force rebuild key maps, which is because we want to then make sure that we are actually updating this and changing it. So we are rebuilding it. And I'll leave that like that for the moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, get, input settings and I will just retake context sensitive as well get input settings the return value I'm going to get action mapping by name so we can then get all the different action mappings that we have dependent on the name we put in here and so again 
I want this to be the jump, so the in action name I will put as jump, as that is exactly how it is in the other one. And the out mappings for this is going to go into a for each loop with that plugged up into the on key selected there. And then I'll explain what we're doing there in a minute, but we'll come out of the loop body here and we're going to remove action mapping, then again context sensitive, remove action mapping like so. Now the target for the both the remove and add is also going to be get input settings, so put that in the target there like that. The key mapping for the remove is going to be the array element there. And out of the completed of this for each loop, we're going to go into the add action mapping like so. And so that is that part done. And so I'll explain what this does. So when the player selects the button, what they can do is then select a different key. When they select the key, what it's going to do is remove the action mapping binding that we already have. And the reason it's in a for each loop is because if we have multiple bindings, it's going to remove every single one of them. So we can run remove all the bindings. Once it has done that, so off of completed, it's then going to add the new action mapping that we have. So the reason we have to do that afterwards is otherwise because we will add it and then remove it straight away. But if we do it this way, we can add it after we have removed the other ones. So this here is where the player is selecting the button, which obviously this button will do it automatically for us. Then also up here under the remove action mapping, we want to untick force rebuild key maps like so. And this is that part done. So again, I'll just comment this one, remove all current key bindings. Actually, I will comment that over to this as well. And then this down here is gonna be to add the new key binding like that. And so this is obviously getting the action mapping that we have. And this is where we create the new button. So we select the button here. So that's that part done. So I'll just comment this whole thing. So select all comment and I'll call it rebind jump. And to comment, you just select it and press C. So now that is how you do an action mapping. I'll show you how to do an axis mapping. So you go to the designer and then we will select the walk forward bind button and do the same process. So on key selected like that, drag this down and we can actually just copy and paste all of this here. So we'll just duplicate that. So control C, control V and plug it all in there like so. And we'll plug that in there as well to make sure everything is connected. And we're gonna change a few things. So we're gonna delete the get action mapping by name and the make input action key mapping and actually the remove and add action mappings here. So basically all we wanted to copy was just the get input settings for each loop and break input cord like that. So this is what we now need here. So what we're gonna do is come out the return value and this time we're gonna get axes mapping by name, not action. The in axes name, we're gonna do the exact same way. So we need this to be spelt the exact same as the one we want to change, which for me is spelt move forward like that. So I'm actually just gonna copy and paste that in there, move forward. Out mappings is gonna go into that array again like so. And now out of this break input chord here, we're gonna come out of the key again, but this time we're going to make input axes key mapping like so instead of action. The axes name is once again gonna be the same as move forward. And we're gonna leave the scale as one as we want this to be going forward. And we won't do anything with these so we can close that actually as you can't press shift or anything to move. And then the input axes key mapping, we want to go into an add axes mapping again untick context sensitive like so same process plug that into completed target goes into the get input settings there and keep force rebuild key maps ticked then off of the loop body we want to remove action mapping like so again the same way so target into get input settings key mappings in array element there well sorry i got remove action mapping i meant to get remove axes mapping not sure how I managed to do that, but remove axis mapping there, loop body, key mapping, and target, untick force rebuild, like so. And again, that is now that part done. But once again, what happens is we have the move forward, but that is only gonna go forward. We also need it to go back. So we'll actually need to create a new button for this as well. So the designer, duplicate the move forward, walk forward, sorry, put it under here, and we'll get this one as walk backwards. And we'll put that in here as well walk backwards like so, make it slightly bigger like that. And now again, exact same process. This time we can actually duplicate a lot more of this. So I'll comment this again, bind, move forward, and then copy and paste it down there. Delete that custom event as that is just because I got to the on clicked event again, on selected, sorry, and just move all this in here like so. Now the selected key, I'm gonna go back into our input cord here. This time we're gonna change this to, we're going to keep it as move forward, but we're going to change the scale to minus one now 
instead of just one as we want this to now go backwards. However, actually for these, we are not going to remove all the current key bindings as that will mess up having multiple because we need to have a W and an S or an up arrow and a down arrow as we need to be able to go forward and backwards on the same axis mapping. So you can obviously change this if you want to have two different axis mappings so you can remove them as so you can remove all the current bindings. However, for the way that the code is set up by default in the game, not removing them would suit best. And obviously if you do want to remove them later on, you can actually just set up a different button to remove them like we've done. So what we're going to do instead is just add it like so. So plug the event into the add and this should now work perfectly for us. So we can compile and save that. And now we need to actually set up being able to put this on the screen so we can use it. So I'm just going to do a very simple thing in the player blueprint. But again, obviously you may want to actually put this in the options menu or the main menu or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get an M keyboard event like that off of pressed. I'm going to get a flip flop to toggle between on and off and then A, I'll just create widget with the class as this bindings widget we have. Return value I'll add to viewport and then out of this I'll also just set game paused so that the game is paused and we are not moving the player around as well. Take that. And now the return value of the create widget I'm also going to then remove from parent. And this is how I'm going to take it off the screen. So then plug that into B and then just set the game back to not paused like so. Compile, save and this should now work. So we can test this around. We can move about, or move forward and backwards and jump or what they should be. Now if we press M, this appears on the screen. And actually we missed one step. I thought I was forgetting something. We need to also show the mouse cursor so that we can actually use it. So come out of these as well, set show mouse cursor, untick context sensitive like that, show mouse cursor true down here, show it and have it as false. And then the target is obviously just get player controller, plug that in there. And actually we also need to change this to execute when paused so we can close it when the game is paused. Now if we try this again, everything is what it should be. Then if we hit M, we can open this up. If we press the jump button here, we can change this to let's say T. If we hit walk forward, we can change this to be I and walk backwards, I'll put it as K. Obviously choose it whatever you like, this is just an example. If I hit M again, I can close this. Now if I'm holding I and K, I can move forwards like this. So I and K is now moving me forwards and backwards as well. And T is also jumping, and if I press space, it doesn't jump. So we now have set up it to be I, K, and T. Obviously you wouldn't actually want these, but this is just the example to show you that this works. But I think that'll be it for this video. Again, you can improve on this massively. So you can actually put this in your own main menu, your own options menu, your own bindings menu, anything like that. And you can change how to do these to make them fit better for you. But this is just the basic way and probably one of the more efficient ways of doing it. So again, I'll show you one more last time. You can just select it and change it like so. So I think that'll be it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.